Hey everyone, in this video we're touring a stunning camper van conversion with a really clean, modern design. Building a DIY camper van that looks this good is a ton of work and this one was built by a whole family. It's super well insulated, it has perfectly customized storage, three different options for electricity, and a hydraulic table leg that makes it easy to transform the living room into a bedroom in under two minutes. We're excited to give you a full tour with Dom and Mary, who use the van as a second home and office on wheels. So let's go check it out. So this is a Dodge Promaster Ram 2014, uh, 136 of length. Uh, it's a high roof. And it's a very nice truck, it's very wide. It has a very short turning span, so we can drive in cities very well. Uh, we can park like a normal car. We never get stuck anywhere. Here is uh, probably the place where we spend the most time. Um, it's the dinette system we have, so we can work during the day. Uh, Mary stays here, I sit here, we work on laptops, and during the night, the whole table goes down and it's on a hydraulic three-stage pedestal system. It's a Springfield Marine. And um, it goes down and the cushions go uh, over the table system. It takes around a minute and a half to transform. Uh, so a lot of people are asking, why do we do that? A lot of people want the storage with the fixed bed, which is a very good idea. But we need to sit down when we travel and so we can work for long hours and uh, it's essential to have this part of the of the van especially that the van is very short it's only a 10 feet box we have at the back the overhead cabinets here are for uh, clothing uh, surprisingly i have way more clothes than mary just because i don't know i have there's way too many clothes in there but it's it, it's fine and uh, all of the all of the four doors are for uh, clothing and outdoor gear, so we have a lot of space to store everything we need. See how Mary is tidy and stuff? And I'm pretty sure it's neat at the back as well, so uh, congratulations Mary, like you're very, very tidy. I'm not. So this is for clothing. A lot of people are asking about the ceiling. Um, we stole the idea for the ceiling in Colorado when we met with uh, native camper vans we were like what is that ceiling made of it's slats of uh, pine that they um, stained and they nailed on a uh, plywood and, and they nailed the plywood to the ceiling so that's pretty much it there's a storage area on top of the driver's seat and this is where we usually put uh, the bedding so the swivel seat at the front is a very important feature just because the van is only 17 feet long and we have mainly um, a living room, a bedroom and, and uh, my office. So this is kind of my office. This is where I work when I don't want to annoy Mary uh, during the day. So she's like, go work in your office. That means in the front of the van. Well, this here is like the main cabinet where we put our dry food, oils, oatmeal, and then here is where we put our glasses. We have too many at the moment. Um, spices, bags, and then under here, so we have a lock to lock it because when we drive it tends to open. And here is our cooler. Don't have much now. We have mostly beer, which is not good. <laughs> uh, so this is a Dometic CFX50. It's a 12 volt and we can put a lot in here. Like we can do almost like a week without going to the groceries. We can put a lot in there and then we always have to push this back in. I mean, it's more expensive than other fridge, but we took it because it's super low on electricity. So this is a Ramblewood two burner stove. So we have a 10 pound propane tank that is located right here. So utensils are all here. Every like little compartments have been made just exactly to put things where they go. And then here we have another one where we put bigger utensils cut boards, uh, placemats, everything is here. And then in this one here is where we have the dishes. So this locks it because it tends to open. And then everything is also in like a place where it belongs so it doesn't wobble. 
And then here under is where we put our pans. And we like this a lot. We got it at Canadian Tire and everything fits in there. And then under we also have like a, you know, a jet boil. Just sometimes we want water to heat up really, really fast. It takes like a minute to heat up water. So this here is the sink. This is a cupboard that we used to have at home and that our Dom's dad actually cut it just so it fits. Cause I, we don't do the dishes all the time, every time we cook. So we just put it on top. Um, this is the faucet, which pulls out and we can clean either our feet, hair, hands, whatever, um, like dirty boots. So we like that. Here is where we also put uh, the gray water and the fresh water. So we have a seven gallon for fresh and seven gallon for gray that we can empty from the other side because we have a door and we have a, like a quick release so we can just empty it. Dom does it because he's strong. So this is where we also keep a trash can, uh, toiletries, we have soap, uh, toilet paper. So everything that is on the counter is actually glued and everything glues perfectly and nothing ever falls. So that's what it is and you can cut it to the size you want and like they're really really strong so what i do is just i cut them in half and so we have a couple light switches this one here is for the water pump um and these two are for lights so we have one for the main alley one for the kitchen and then we have two lights over there one for both sides of the bed area this is a fantastic fan uh 5730 it has a water sensor and you can either start it manually or automatically it has like different variations of opening which is really nice and with the two windows in the back it makes like a really nice draft this here is where we keep everything for toiletries so we have a couple towels my bag dom's bag wipes because we don't have a shower and we don't have a bathroom so we tend to use wipes when we're on the road for a very long period of time every like four nights if we didn't take a shower we might go to like campgrounds just to pay either for the shower for the night uh, truck stops, we've done those. And then sometimes we wash our hair with this on either side. This is also where I shave my legs because I sometimes need to do it. And uh, yeah, so we go to showers mostly, but this is where we mostly do hair and feet. So I don't pee in a funnel. I don't have one yet, but I do use this cup. Sometimes it's like late or in the middle of the street and I can't go outside, so I use this. But for bathrooms, we mainly go to like stores and Tim Hortons, McDonald's, Walmarts. So we stop here and there along the route, but we mostly go outside. So in the Pro Masters here, you have metal columns um, usually, and uh, we decided to build a wooden column so we can hide all the electricity. So all the wires are behind this. So, and as you can see, there's some AC here, and then we have 12 volts uh, switches here. You also have some USB plugs right here that you can switch on and off. This column is very important just because it's hiding a lot of electrical uh, gear. The MC4s for the solar panel on the, on the roof are here. And on the roof, we have a 300 watt solar panel from Canadian Solar. And underneath the left bench at the back is the whole electrical unit. So right here, when you open this like this, you have the secret of our electrical power. So you have the 2000 watt inverter right there. You have the MPPT solar char charger controller right there. You have two six volt batteries right there. So what was important with that system is that we wanted the batteries to be full on all the time. And it's very important when you work on the road to be able to have electricity 24 seven. So there's three ways to keep those batteries charged. The first one would be with the solar panel. There's the isolator that takes the electricity from the engine running. And there's the shore power at the back when everything dies, where we can't move and where the solar panel is getting lazy, we just plug in the wall and we charge everything with this uh, supercharger right there. We have a custom roof rack that Remora built for us and it's very nice. The way he works, he comes to your place, he takes all the measurements, he asks you where, where you want your solar panel to be. We actually asked him to make the solar panel eight inches uh, higher because we usually carry uh, paddle boards and we wanted to avoid the paddle boards casting a shadow on the solar panels. He also added a side ladder in aluminum in order for us to be able to walk on the roof and make sure everything's under control. Like during winter, sometimes we have to go clear the solar panel out because there's a lot of snow and ice. 
So here is the other side of the dinette. So we usually put all the bigger stuff, like the camping gear right there. So all the chairs, the tables, the sleeping bags. You can access it from behind here, or you can literally access it from the top if the doors are closed at the back. So this van is insulated with three layers of stuff. Uh, the first layer is a reflectix layer all, all around the metal parts of the van. After that, you have some Roxel wool, that is a NAR 14 insulation wool. And after that, two layers of vapor barrier, just to avoid uh, mold and uh, wet conditions. So it's, it's very well insulated. However, we have a lot of windows, just because we wanted enough light so we can spend long hours in the van uh, for work. It's kind of a compromise we had to make here. We got the van two years ago and so the first summer was mostly like building the van and then the next summer we traveled like in Quebec, Ontario, uh, Vermont, United States and then next year we're planning a big big road trip. We're leaving for seven months so I'll be working on my PhD on the road. You'll be working on a documentary or clients with orchestra, his agency. So we're leaving for seven months going down to Mexico, up to Alaska and then coming back home. We came up with the idea when we came back from Iceland in 2016. We were like, ah, we just came back from this amazing trip around the island with a van. We drew the van, we, we had a lot of inspiration. Both our fathers came up with tools, ideas, skills. Uh, they, they knew how to make cabinets, they knew how to build walls, they knew how to insulate stuff. So my dad did the flooring and the insulation, and your dad did about everything else. Mm -hmm. We designed the van and we painted the van and mom's cooked food while we're working on the van for many weekends. So yeah, it was, it was a big family project. Yeah. Since we finished uh, this van we call uh, Vanessa, um, we got a lot of requests uh, on Instagram about you know how we built it and stuff. And uh, my father raised his hand and her father raised his hand as well and they were like we can build other vans if you want so they're actually they're a funny couple these two yeah. they're like yeah okay bring on the bring on the kids we're gonna build their vans so far uh we have an order of six to build we are already up to three that are done so we're trying to keep our fathers busy because they're both retired so they're like yeah we can do some work in the garage in our spare time because that's all we have spare time what I like about vanning is that we have yeah. a lot of shoots with clients, so we like to travel to one place, park where the client is and just wait for the sunrise. And uh, it's very convenient to have all your clothes, all your cooking stuff, uh, yeah. water all the time. It saves a lot of time, a lot of mm -hmm. energy, a lot of money, so we're like, this is kind of an office and a home at the same time, so we save a lot of energy and we, en we enjoy life on the road in general. If you want to follow Dom and Mary, you can check them out on Instagram and Facebook at Van Life Sagas. Also, if you want to see more camper van tours, you can check out our playlists. There's tons of great conversions there. Please share this video if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.